I'm going to unbox what I got from Kofi for Valentine's Day and hopefully you guys will see what I got him when he gets home too. The first thing that I'm going to unbox from Kofi are these flowers from Bloomsy Box. A couple of years ago, Kofi ordered flowers for me from Bloomsy Box and he actually set up auto deliveries. So every month I actually get a bouquet of fresh flowers from my husband. I definitely feel spoiled. I love fresh flowers. You'll probably see them in most, if not all of my video vlogs. Whatever's bloomed in season is what they will send or whatever's on theme with whatever the upcoming holiday is. And oh, how pretty are these? With a little love message in there. That's beautiful. Roses and a couple of other really pretty things. Of course, you need flowers for Valentine's Day. So he's not even here and he's already getting bonus points for this. This is amazing. And usually they come with a little bit of information. This one's really nice because it actually has a farm spotlight on the farm in Ecuador where these flowers originated. So even the flowers that are exotic are sustainably harvested, which is nice. So I guess I actually just talked Kofi right up. He's home now. Welcome to the Mimi Show. <laughs> I was just talking about you because okay. I just got the flowers from Bloom's Box for nice. this month. So nice. that was my first thing to unbox for the Valentine's Day unboxing. Excellent. Excellent. Would you like to unbox your stuff for Valentine's Day? Since I'm doing the Valentine's Day unboxing, oh boy. maybe you should unbox a little something too. I didn't know I was getting anything. All right. Yeah, sure you should go and do this on camera. You should go and do this on camera. We can always never, edit. What do we have here? Chocolates. You can never go wrong. Look at this. CVS. See how she's trying to clown you guys? Ah! A CVS gift card. <laughs> My wife and kids know that CVS is my home away from home. Home away from home. But listen, CVS has everything. No, oh my God, <laughs> this guy. Including eight foot coupons, <laughs> eight foot receipts with coupons on them. So anyway, thank you. So I had to get you Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Appreciate yes. it. Thank you. I don't I'll know if you want to pull that up out of the box. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what is it. Let me see what it is. What it is. What, it is. what do we have here? Please. What kind of thing are you doing Please. here? What kind of vlog is this? <laughs> Wow! Wow! He ran off, he ran off, he oh, ran off, you guys. And to just finish off my unboxing before I start getting ready, I've got my Valentine's Day present, which actually isn't a surprise. I was there and picked out what I wanted. Um, as you guys may or may not know, Barney's is going out of business. It's so sad. Um, but we were at the Barney's in Beverly Hills that's close to uh, Kobe's office. We are just leaving Barney's. You can kind of see it across the street there. Unfortunately, Barney's is going out of business, um, but we are seeing them off. <laughs> we are seeing them off. Retail, retail yes. is dying. <laughs> yes. Retail is dying. Unfortunately. And they just had amazing sales. So I picked up a couple of handbags. First one, how cute is that? Love this. And it's got these other great handles that flip up. So it's kind of like geometric and interesting. So I've been looking for a silver bag for a while. So I was so excited when I found this one and my loving husband grabbed it for me. The other little bag that I picked up here. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum, bum. It is a mini bag from Zach Posen, which is just so super cute. I love the little pearls. I just think it's such a cute size and it's gonna make a great crossbody. I have a full size Zach Posen that I really love um, in navy blue color. I just think this yellow is fun and fresh. It's gonna be so cute for spring. Maybe I'll wear it for Easter or Mother's Day, but it's just feminine and fancy and I like it for every day. So thank you, Kofi. Happy Valentine's Day to me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start in on my makeup while I talk to you guys a little bit about the day, about Valentine's Day, and about what we're doing tonight. We are a little bit under a time crunch. Kofi just got home and I had dropped off the kids with their grandfather. The kids are going to stay overnight at their grandparents' house so that Kofi and I can go to 
the Social Media Superstars Awards. And my amazing husband has been nominated for the Social Media Superstars Award in the international real estate category. So it's kind of a big night for him. I'm super excited for him. It was just amazing that he received that nomination. And the event is going to be in Beverly Hills at the Four Seasons. So I'm going to wear red, but we are just going to make the most of this event and actually make it into a date night and kind of an early Valentine's Day celebration. I just wanted to speak on the idea of using work events as date nights because if you are a really busy couple, sometimes it's hard to just block time, even though it's really, really important. I think one of the things that has really transformed and strengthened our relationship is trying to make time to um, have date nights on a regular basis. It's not always possible because usually there's so many things going on, but we've tried to do our best if Kofi has a work trip or if um, I have some sort of work event to see if we can flip it into something that would be fun for us as a couple as well. So obviously there are the obligations that come with some of the events. For example, tonight, even after the event is over, the kids will be away. So we'll get to have a little bit more time for maybe like an extra nightcap drink, just to spend some time together and get caught up while we're all dressed up and looking nice anyway. Normally for an event this significant, I would consider using my favorite professional makeup artist who comes to my home to do my makeup, but I was so pressed for time today picking the kids up and dropping them off that I just decided I had to go it alone. So I actually just had to run upstairs and put on some lashes because my lash gal was sick last week, so I could not get my lashes done. So I had to just do strip lashes, which I haven't done in a while. And it's funny because if you haven't done them in a while, it's so stressful when you're trying to get them on. It's just like virtually impossible. It's either gonna be on right away, no problem, easy, or it's gonna be like a total fiasco. So I think um, I had one that went on right away easy and the other one was a total fiasco. <laughs> so I really like spending time with my husband and it's such a treat when we can do that in the middle of the week without kids. Again, fortunately for me, because of his job, he does get quite a few invitations to a lot of things that warrant, um, you know, dressing up and going out. So that's kind of fun. Um, but we really are pretty close. And so we take advantage of the opportunity on the drive over to just kind of get caught up on the day and other stuff, plans, things that we have in the works. And during the evening, you know, we try to be present and enjoy each other's company. And then, you know, same, same thing on the way back, just really kind of reflecting on, on how the evening went. I learned how to do my makeup when I was in New York City in graduate school. I actually signed a modeling contract with Wilhelmina and basically worked fashion weeks to pay my rent and some of my school fees. It has really served me well, and I know that for events like this, I just need to layer on even more makeup than I would typically feel comfortable with. Looking good. All right, so found the camera. Mimi's not around. So now I get to talk to you guys. So what do you want to talk about? Here we are. Mimi's vlog. The secret sessions with Kof. <laughs> All right, but on a more serious note, we're getting ready to go out. We, uh, it's sort of a built-in celebration, date night, Valentine's Day night. I was nominated for a social media superstar award for international real estate for what I do in social media in the real estate space. I uh, got the email initially and I'm like, what is this? I've never heard of this. This is a funny name. Um, then I got a follow-up email a couple weeks later and I looked and they were having an awards banquet at the Four Seasons in Beverly Hills and it was uh, an international organization out of Britain. And I said, okay, this is, this is legit. So uh, we're excited to go out. We're spinning it into a date night. It's uh, right around the corner from Valentine's Day. So we're celebrating that as well. Um, and this is, this is the huge, I'm ready. Waiting for her to get ready. Watch this, watch this. Baby, you almost ready? 
Yeah, she says. That's the answer for like the last 10, 15 minutes, every single time. But got everything ready together. Got my suit on, little Roberto Cavalli, nice fit. Got my little tie. Got to shout out the time piece. You guys who know me know I'm into watches. The Alonga uh split platinum face. Look at this guy. Mm. See, babe, this is what happens when you let me take over your camera for a few minutes. But anyway, you guys wish me luck. Um, regardless, it's been nice to be nominated. Hopefully we'll come away with a victory. That's always the plan. That's what we do. We have to go after it that way. And uh, we'll tune in in a little bit. Okay, so we made it to the car. I've got this whole setup. Kofi's afraid that we're gonna get pulled over. Pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> pulled over. We got a light. Uh, we got a yeah, screen. We're gonna see what's Brown skin. Yeah, we're, exactly. getting we're getting pulled over. <laughs> we're getting pulled over. But I thought for Valentine's Day, it'd be really cute if we talked about how we met. How we met, the best day of your life. Is this on? Of course it's on. What do you mean? <laughs> we met in 2003. Is this like an origin story? It's sort of like an origin uh, story. Cool. Why? I'm just asking. <laughs> like, Listen. We met in 2003. So that was the year after I graduated from college at Columbia. And it's really interesting because there's a really interesting parallel right now because of the coronavirus, because that was the year of the SARS epidemic. And so I had been playing on the Ghana Women's National Team for seven years, and I finally was going to have my run at the Women's World Cup, and the games were supposed to be in China, but because of the SARS epidemic, they relocated the games at the last minute. Um, it wasn't on the scale of the coronavirus now, obviously, but it was really serious at the time. It was a big pandemic. So I guess we should like back up and just talk about like leading up to this moment. Where were you relationship wise? Is this on? It is. Speak clearly. I was waiting for my princess to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right. Hey, listen. <laughs> let's, let's keep it real here for a minute. Keep it real. Um, I was not in a serious relationship. I was dating and, you know, reached an age where, you know, you've dated for a while. You kind of know what you're looking for. You have a sense of, you know, being even ready to settle down, which, which for most men is a, a transition. Either you sense yourself getting there or you meet somebody who takes you there, right? And so I think that I was sensing myself getting there and uh, yeah, it was 2003, I was in good shape. He was Just hot, saying. he was Just hot. Saying. Yeah, and I wasn't really in a serious relationship either. I had dated someone kind of seriously in college, but that had just broken off and he was, I was a chump. dating someone. He, he was a chump. He was a chump, he was a chump, he was a chump. He will not be named, but he was a chump. And then, you know, I kind of dated someone else. I won't call it a rebound, nice guy, but he just wasn't. He was a him. chump. <laughs> I don't know who any of these guys are, but they were chumps. <laughs> wasn't really meant to be. I was young, I was 22. But I am, I've always been like a commitment kind of person. You know, either be single or what's, what's the point of just kind of dating around for fun. I remember I was journaling about like the kind of person that I would want to be with ultimately. I guess because of that last breakup, I had had some time to reflect on what I really wanted. But I didn't necessarily expect to find it that soon. Um, yeah, because I don't think most people expect to find their like forever partner at 22. Um, so yeah, those opening two uh, World Cup games were at what was then the Home Depot Center. Now I think it's the Dignity Health Center. Home Depot to StubHub and then Dignity. Yeah, exactly. That's just not far at all from where Kofi grew up uh, in Carson, California, where his parents still live. So he and his dad came to watch the games. Kofi's dad, like my dad, is from Ghana in West Africa. And interestingly, that's something that I was looking for because my Ghanaian heritage is really important to me. Obviously, I had this amazing journey of exploring my identity through representing the women's national team. So I really wanted someone who would be able to 
understand, identify, and value that part of my identity. Someone who liked jollof rice. Someone who I likes mean, jollof. I mean, well, everybody mind. likes jollof rice. This is to true. be honest, to be this honest, everybody likes jollof. It's just Ghanaian hard. jollof rice, not Nigerian not, jollof no. rice. No, oh please, please, <laughs> oh please. So um, there was a lot of buzz. The fans were super excited. Ghanaian fans just come out. When they come out, they come out. They've got drums. They've got face paint. You've never felt so good until you have been part of the Ghanaian home crowd. That's right. Yeah, there's nothing like that experience. So Kobe's dad uh, came to the meet and greet after the game. We had meet and greet, autograph signing. I remember I was hanging around, talking to people, thanking them for coming out to the games and supporting. And I met this kindly gentleman. And he was really nice, very sweet demeanor, and he was talking, you know, very interesting. He had kind of interesting stories, and he just seemed to be really positive, a kind energy. And then the conversation went sideways because he says, oh, you know, I have a son. <laughs> this is the thing. As soon as you hit, like, 1920 in Ghanaian culture, suddenly everybody has a son. And I was not here for it. I was not here for it one ounce. I was like, oh, well, look at the time. Time for nap time. Time for me to go. Time for me to shut it down. It's been really nice talking to you, sir. I hope you come out to the next game. However, I'm out. But Kofi's dad, interestingly, invited the entire team to his house for a dinner, traditional Ghanaian dinner. I was the only player, actually I'm the first player who was not actually born in Ghana to represent Ghana. We have since had heritage players. My sister was one of them. The uh, twins, the Boating twins, one of the twins also represented Ghana, although he's German born. So a couple of people have come after me, but really I was the one who paved the way. Yes, talk about a homecoming. Kobe's dad hosted the team for traditional dinner. Um, watch it there. <laughs> Uh, and Kofi was there, and that's when we met. And he was so handsome. Clearly, he's so handsome. He was so handsome. I was really kind of swept away. I have to be honest. I was kind of swept away and caught up for a minute. And we talked, and he was charismatic and funny and bright and just all these things. I was like, wow. This all is these amazing. things I paid her to say. Good, it's crooked. Now it's crooked. Now it's crooked. No, but we're even, aren't we? No. No. You didn't even turn it, Joey. Oh, I don't turn that much. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Not perfect. Not at all. So, real quick, I gotta interrupt. Um, my take on that first little part is we adjust the uh, phone and I'm trying to drive. Uh, so yeah, my dad invited the whole team over. He had told me nothing of this conversation. So I just went to his house to help out uh, with the event. And sure enough, the whole team pulls up, team bus. A lot of people from the Ghanaian community came out to support and the players were getting off and some of the coaches and so forth. And you know, Mimi stepped off the bus, right? And I saw her come into the house and I was like, you know what? She's a little too cute to be a player. I don't know, you know. Aww, not, you how know, do you I think, feel about uh, that? I, you know, not not to say the players can't be cute, but I'm just <laughs> if we're being real here, if we're keeping it honest, the uh, the team was tough. <laughs> <laughs> the team was tough. Oh <laughs> so I was like, who is this uh, this this beautiful six foot tall? You know, and she's tall too. So you know, most even Ghanaian men soccer players are like five seven. That's true. You know, so most of the players are a little bit shorter in stature. The women are five two, five three, five four, and then Mimi steps off six feet, and I'm like, ah, she's not a player. Too cute, too tall, too cute. But sure enough, lo and behold, she's a uh, the top striker. This is true. I actually don't have body type that's typical of Ghanaian women per se. And I was just kind of lanky, more like a Kenyan than a Ghanaian. For interrupt, side story. I was in Chicago. Um, I listed Michael Jordan's house a while back. I focused on sports entertainment for a lot of my real estate clients. And I was in Chicago and I was in a hotel in Chicago, okay? Actually, it was a peninsula in Chicago. <clears throat> And I go to the gym to work out, and there's a guy who worked at the hotel 
ooh, I hear his accent. I'm like, he sounds Ghanaian. I said, where are you from? He said, Ghana. And I said, oh, okay. I said, yeah, I'm Ghanaian as well. You know, he said, well, you sound like you're American. I said, well, I was born here, but my dad's from Ghana, from Kumasi, and my wife is also the same as me. Her dad's from Ghana, mom from the States. And uh, she actually played for the, the Black Queens, you know. He said, what? Wow, which one's her name? You know, which one is she? I said, well, her name is Mimi. He said, oh, the tall, lanky one. <laughs> Exactly. The lanky one. That's the it. Tall, that, lanky one. that sums it up that's right it. there. That, that tells the whole that's story. It. That's, that's it. it's that's definitely it. distinctive. She's well known. She's well known. Famous. They don't. They don't make it. They don't make them lanky. They don't usually. make them this tall. That's right. it. That's it. Back to the story. I don't know what So back to the story. Yeah. So evening's winding down, and Kofi asks for a number. So I'm like, you know, I like this guy, but I don't know if I'm just kind of caught up right now. Is it just that I've been in training camp and I've been isolated and my impression of him is just better than, <laughs> than reality. But let me just give him the hotel room number because that's pretty safe. We're gonna be camping in LA for another, you know, few days up to a week. So uh, he can catch me at the hotel. If it's still on, I'll give him another number. If it's not on, I'll just vanish into the sunset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind of my fallback plan. Or, you know, maybe it was the next day. I can't remember the exact timeline, but I will say this. He always says that this isn't true, but when I left the, his dad's house that night, I got in touch with one of my girlfriends and I was like, you know, it's so crazy. I met this guy and I think he might be my husband. I said this. I was like, I think he might be my husband and it's so weird because he's in LA and I don't have any ties to LA. So I just don't even know how this is going to be, but I just have this scent. So he, he doesn't believe me, but, but I had a sense. I had a sense. A couple days go by and I get a call and I usually did all of the team interviews. Um, really because I'm a native English speaker. That's that's the thing, it makes it easy. There's no language barrier, there's no accent barrier. So a lot of times I took calls and did a lot of the interviews for the team while we were here in the United States. So I get a call from the LA Times to talk about our game against China from a reporter named Walter, I remember. And Walter had a bunch of interesting questions about myself, the team, the strategy, just, you know, and it was nap time, so I was like a little groggy. I'd just woken up, but I was really doing my best to try to like nail these questions and put in some sound bites that I knew we needed to include. And about 10 minutes into this conversation, the reporter just burst out laughing. And he's like, oh, you know, just kidding. This is Kofi, but you were doing such a good job with those questions though. Hi, this is Walter. I was calling from the LA Times. I just had a few questions about your game. And uh, you know, I just wanted to say that, uh, boom, got her. So he got me, he got me, he's a prankster. He has been pranking me ever since. So 17 years later, the pranks continue. I, after the World Cup was over, I went back to my parents' house they were living in Oregon at the time, in Beaverton, Oregon, and I stayed there briefly uh, while I was taking the GRE and applying to graduate school. And I was going back to Columbia in New York City. I really love New York. I thought I was gonna be in New York for a good hot minute, um, but you know, you meet people and plans change. Um, you this know, is the long we, version of the story. You're lucky we have traffic. <laughs> this is the version. What do you mean the long version? <laughs> Okay, the long yeah. version. Yeah, There's yeah, only yeah. one version. No, there's your version. There's my version. One met her, version. I made her laugh. She married me. Fast forward. We have kids. Hardly, hardly. You know, Kofi. He was just so charming. Um, he used to write me letters. He used to write me She's letters. Like, letters. She's amazing. She's you know, Kofi's actually a wordsmith. He's great with poetry. He used to be great at freestyling. Little known fact. <laughs> Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, we experienced this tragic loss of Kobe Bryant, and he just wrote this amazing piece of poetry and that he dedicated to Kobe Bryant. And it's just like a little glimpse at his mastery of diction. So he definitely, he definitely convinced me with his, his written words. I ended up, yeah, so I ended up going to Columbia. I did do uh, an intensive master's program and the plan, we did long distance. Long distance does not always work, 
but I think it worked for us because there was a clear end date. So the plan was like, I'll go, I'll do this program. If things are still good, I'm willing to relocate and move to LA because I moved a bunch of times, like 13 times growing up. So I didn't really have a hometown, but Kofi is really from LA. Um, you were born in Seattle, moved, lived a couple different places, but really the bulk of your life has been in LA. So um, I was willing to make that compromise because I, I really wasn't giving up much to say move to LA. I was young and you know, my parents ended up moving several more times even since then, so. That's how we met. Oh my God, okay. All right, all right, I guess that's it for now. Tonight's going to be like. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ross King. Find this host in his price range. It's great to be here. Can I just say, I mean, what an honor it is to host the Social Media Superstar Awards. I have always wanted to host. was a terrifically tough choice given the extraordinary success of the nominees. Obviously Warner Brothers Joker, brilliant campaign for the movie. Focus features as well with Downton Abbey and also I have spotted over there my dear friend and the one, the only Mrs. Patmore from Downton Abbey. Great to see you Leslie. Wouldn't it be brilliant if you'd won? But you haven't. Goodness. But you've always been in my eyes. So the winner of the category is Amazon's Mrs. Maisel Day. I love that. And on behalf of Amazon, we Patricia Davis from Amazon PR to accept on their behalf. The judges praised the work of the Adidas team for their ecological stance, but it was Nike who won. <laughs> Samsung. <laughs> the Real Estate nominee. This is just such an amazing brand. When you look at the timepieces that they're creating, when you look at what they're doing with the brand, and I just wanted to say thank you again for coming. Anyone who's buying or selling in the Sunset Strip in Hollywood Hills calls us. I thought we could work together, but clearly we can't. Good luck at the Oppenheim group. You're gonna need it. <laughs> okay. I'm very proud of our company and our agents and our staff. And we've truly been remarkable in creating what is arguably the single most successful real estate office on the planet. The goal, and wait, so what you sit here is that what you're saying? I had a short dress once, long story. <laughs> by the terrific level of talent and creativity in this category with a wide-ranging raft of innovative content. Special mentions for their standout work are the Naughty Group, Normand and Associates, and the Oppenheim Group. But the winner is Compass! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> I'm so mad that you have a mouthful of Cheetos. You're recording right now. I'm recording. It was a great night. Wait, turn the music down. I just want to say how proud I am of you because you were nominated like some really major brands. Like Land Rover was nominated. Calvin Klein was nominated. British Airways. Like it was amazing. It was amazing. It was a cool event for it sure. It was definitely cool and it was so much more than definitely I in good even company. expected. You were in amazing company. So I'm really proud. It feels great to be the wife of a superstar. Um, we hung out tonight with Jason. Oppenheim. Oppenheim from buddies. Selling Sunset, which is a show that I actually like. And I was telling him that it really speaks volumes because when you're married to real estate and you're willing to watch more real estate, it's a fun show. So he kind of showed us the ropes, what it's like to be single in LA. <laughs> single in Hollywood, specifically. Single in Hollywood. So he took us around to a couple of cool places. And now we are going to go home and figure out our lives because it's a work day tomorrow for Kofi. I'm gonna have to pick up the kids, take Lincoln to school, homeschool Laya. This is what date night can evolve to. This is <laughs> <laughs> it's Jason's fault today. So Jason, it's Jason's we fault. go way back to HGTV days, selling LA to million dollar listing appearances. Um, good dude. But we're gonna blame him for having totally hard, a hard day Totally gonna blame tomorrow. him. Totally, it's gonna be bar rough. hopping with him. Bar hopping with Jason. That's what got us tonight. That's but it. That's it. Really fun night. It's good times. All right. All right. All right. Now I gotta make it home.